Hi, welcome back again to um, today's edition of Fifi Man for on YouTube. Uh, there's a lot to discuss here. We are, we are previewing the AFCON for tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of games for the AFCON tomorrow. And I'll give you some tidbits also as well. So stick and stay with Fifi Man for on YouTube. There's a lot going on um, in terms of third place sites, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Zambia, um, all the other teams that are in third place are hoping to go to Tunisia, Algeria, all of these teams. Morocco have played a drill um, with a DRC. The AFCON is, is, is beginning to take shape. Excellent stuff is going on in the African Cup of Nations. 23 games, that's fine, African Cup of Nations. And not not just, not even one, one of them has gone on to be um, a goalless draw, um, 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 has been without a goal. Right now, Tanzania and then um, Zambia are playing, and Zambia are by a goal to zero. So it means that today's game, we have seen a goal. It's going to be a later game where South Africa and Namibia will lock horns. If we see again, it means that in every game that has been played in the group stage, first, second days, every day has been, um, every day has recorded a goal. And that'll be some brilliant stuff for the African Cup of Nations. So you stick and stay with me here. This is Fifi Manfred on YouTube. There's a lot to unpack, um, like the release clause of Benjamin Sesco, which is actually very small compared to the other um, center forwards that Chelsea are looking at buying. I don't know if it's the kind of player that a lot of Chelsea fans would look at, would want to get into their team. I mean, Benjamin Sesco as a player. But hey, we'll, we'll get talking about Benjamin Sesco and then what he does for the team, what he can bring to Chelsea Football Club and the other attackers. Um, there is also the story of Chelsea Football Club and then um, the preparation towards um, Nottingham Forest. So in terms of the opponent's watch and everything that's going on there, Nottingham Forest played against Rotterdam in the Championship. And then they drew one one. Rota, Rotterdam are bottom of the English Championship and they are struggling. But again, you know that when they go out to the bridge and they go and face Chelsea, they will put up a huge fight. Michael Carrick side have not been playing well, but Riverside, when they went there and they met Chelsea, they were excellent in everything that they wanted to do. So um, that's just by way of um, opponent to watch for Chelsea. But we're going to the African Cup of Nations games. Tomorrow, they are not watching games in Group B. So there's a possibility of either of um Ivory Coast, Ghana, Egypt, one of them going home. There is a high possibility that one of them can go home. So we stick and stay with me. I'll preview all the games for you. We'll start with the games in group A that will go on uh in group A. First of all, Ivory Coast versus Equatorial Guinea. So in the first game, the home team, in fact, in the World Cup qualifiers and games in the lead out to the African Cup of Nations had been walloping teams, they've been beating teams. 5-1-9-0. In fact, in their, last, their last game against Sierra Leone, they beat them by 6 goals to 0. So everybody in Abidjan and in Ivory Coast, by extension, felt that when the African Cup of Nations comes around, they'll be able to beat everybody. They'll be able to take everybody to the cleaners. They'll play some exciting stuff. But in the first game, they played against Guinea-Bissau. That's the weakest team in the goal. I mean, no disrespect to them. They struggled to beat them by that 2 goals to 0. Then they came up against arch rivals in Nigeria. Then the game ended 1-0 in favor of Nigeria. They lost. They had three points. They're playing against the Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea drew against Nigeria and then they beat Guinea Bissau. Equatorial Guinea has four points. They are up in that group on the same point with Nigeria. Now, if Equatorial Guinea manages to get a point from the Ivory Coast tomorrow, it means that they sail through. If Nigeria even wins, Nigeria are going to go on seven points. Equatorial Guinea go on five. Then Ivory Coast will be, will be waiting for the other third place teams. Four points. Now, if you look at the goal difference of the Ivorians, if they manage to get a draw tomorrow, the goal difference remains, which is like one. If teams like Ghana, who have to win, end up winning and they score more, then Ivorians are in trouble. Like other teams who have to win, they, then you are in trouble, actually. So it, it, it's a big game in Ivory Coast, and I'm anticipating a nervy, tense atmosphere tomorrow in the Alassane Ouattara Olympic Stadium because it's a big game for the Ivorians. They, you can't host a tournament like this and go out in the first round, especially given the kind of quality that the Ivorians have. In the last AFCON, they've done it before, they've left in the first round before. But hey, this is a game that they know that they need to do everything possible to go ahead and get the win. And they will try to do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, the likes of Max Gradel, the likes of um, Ibrahim Sangari, Wiseko Fofana, and then of course, Frank Yannikesi, the captain, Serge Aurier, they will don the Ivorian jersey as the left fan of Ivory Coast and make sure they go in and then stain the Kutura game. It's going to be a tough game, but then the Ivorians are going to get a job done. Tomorrow, uh, the possible lineup you are seeing is going to be like, as we've seen, Brahma Sangari, Evan Indika as the two centre-backs. 
And then, of course, there is Max Conan and Serge Aurea. Aurea will come in with that experience that he has with the team. Sheku Fufona, Sangare, and Frank Yannick Essie make up a very combative and dwelling mid for three. Then up top, there is Jeremy Boga, Jan Miguel Quasso, and then, of course, Kwame. And it's a team that I think that tomorrow, given everything that's going on in the Ivory Coast, the tension and whatnot, they should be able to get a job done, beat Equatorial Guinea, and then go on to the next stage of the competition, hopefully with six points and even topping, uh, possibly being second, and then Equatorial Guinea staying in with just um, four points. If you, if, if you look into the group proper, right, I want to get into the group for you. So, yeah, if you look into the group proper, Sector Guinea are top with plus two goals, um, Nigeria plus one, um, Cote d'Ivoire um, plus one, also with three points. So, if Sector Guinea loses, you they have plus two. They have a, a huge chance of qualifying as third place team. I don't think Sector Guinea will go out tomorrow because I doubt teams like Ghana can score more than three or two. So, um, I'll see how that will go. So, yeah, that's with that group Nigeria against Guinea Bissau. This should be a walk in the park for the Nigerians. Um, Guinea Bissau are all but out. They have no points in their group. They are bottom of their group. They know that it's going to be very difficult for them to win this game. The Nigerians played very well. They played exactly how I thought Nigeria should be put together in a three back with um William Thrustekon, Calvin Bassi, and Shea Yajaye making a back three. I've said it several times. Um, Calvin Bassi steps into midfield to add a steal against the Ivorians when they were being overrun in the middle of the pack to help um, Franco Nyeka and then Alexi will be the Ola Aina and Kenneth Umeru uh, also add to them, add some steel in the middle of the pack. Then of course, Sami Chukwu is there, Victor Usime, and then of course, Adem Alalukman made up the front three. This is a team that should be able to get a job done against tomorrow, the Guineans. So, it's a tough game, but I'm expecting still that Nigerians should be able to win and then go through to the round of six. Then we're going to the big one in Gobi, um, where there's going to be Ghana, Cape Verde, and then um, Mozambique, and then of course the Egypt. It's a tough game for the Ghanaians actually. Um, I've heard the um, Conte, the manager of, of of Mozambique, that says that hey, we are not under pressure. The Ghanaians are under pressure. Their fans are putting pressure on them. They are the big boys. They have to win. We will be there. We've seen their favorites. We're going to them. We'll find ways of beating the Ghanaians tomorrow. So every Mozambique country, calm down. We have a plan in beating the Ghanaians and, and everything that they are saying. And, it is a little bit bold and funny because they have confidence. And, and he said also that, hey, you can have a kudus. You can be whatever that you think that he is. But the game is a team sport. If your team is not playing together as a team and you rely on individuals, they know that they can stop you. And they believe that like the Ghanaians are not playing like a team. They think that the Ghanaians are not in tune with each other. They are not in the same tandem. They are not in the same wavelength. And it's tough for them to play together as one unit, as one pair. So... How are they going to get a job? And they believe that that gives them huge advantage to go into a game with the Ghanaians. And we've had Chris Hughes and he says it's calm. The players know exactly what to do and there is no stress at all. They're going to that game, getting the job done. Ghana made it difficult for themselves when they lost all three points against Cape Verde. The game was drawing. They ended up losing the game finally. They, ended, they went to the game against Egypt up by two goals, um, took one goal, up by another one goal at 2 1. Then they ended up losing the game entirely. And then you're in a precarious situation, um, even as a possible third, best third place side in the group. So it's a tough one for the Ghanaians. It's also um, the, the, the Mozambicans lost against the Cape Verde, who have automatically qualified. Now, it's a quest for Ghana and Mozambique. Whoever wins that game stands a huge chance of qualifying as one of the third place best. I don't think that Egypt will lose a game against, um, against Cape Verde because Cape Verde are going to rest a lot of players i mean it can happen but i don't think that's going to happen so let's see if that's going on go, going to happen but we'll see how tomorrow goes on in terms of majida shimeru um according to kate coach chris Hutton, he says it's fine he has been assessed he trained today and he's going to go on and play tomorrow so we expect ghana to line up the same way um again um there are reports that are saying that maybe um, baba Idris will come in because as is in general we are expecting salis abdul summit in there i'm expecting um, Lamte on the bench tomorrow. There is no way Lamte should not be on the bench tomorrow. I'm expecting Lamte to be on the bench tomorrow. And Mensa, Salis, Ujiku, Odoi as a back four. And it's going to be Ayu, Kudus, Williams, and then of course Antoine Semenyo. I think something should be changed. Something that something should be changed um, about it. But this particular lineup for Ghana. 
but we'll see how that goes. Um, there is no way Ghana should be going into this lineup with just Idrisu. There is also supposed to be um, Baba Idrisu. Uh, there's supposed to be uh, uh, Lamte in the Ghana squad. It's important because if Ashimiri is not fully fit, and there are going to be times where you need someone to control possession and it dictates the pace of the game from central areas, then of course you need Lamte in that middle to pull the strings and then uh, be the orchestrator of everything that Ghana does. It's, it's a huge game, especially off the back of Ghana's last half gone. And then, of course, the fact that Ghana can be under a lot of pressure. But hey, it's a game that Ghana can win. It's a game that I think that Ghana have what it takes to go out and win the game. They need to just dig in deep, dictate the pace of the game, stay calm, get an early goal, and then put the Mozambicans to the sword. An early goal is important, but regardless of that, no matter how long it is to get a goal, Ghana just needs to stay in the game. Stay in the game. You don't need to panic. You don't need to stress about anything. Just stay in the game as long as possible. No matter how far it drags, stay in the game because really, want, as long as you stay in the game, that's when you know that you can effect changes. You can do something about the game that's going on. But if you are down by a goal to zero and you are not in the game, you are in trouble. I like the pair of Ashimeru and then Salis Abdul Samet. I would just hope that the coach encourages Salis to break the lines more, break the lines. I think that that's the biggest issue. Passing to break the line is a big deal for us. We never seem to pass to break the line. We always carry the ball to break the line. It is something that you need to vary. You need to sometimes carry the ball with a progressive carry. Sometimes you ought to pass the ball to break the line. But I mean, with everything that's going on, I'm confident that Ghana is going to win tomorrow. And I'm expecting that Egypt at least also gets a draw tomorrow uh, against the Cape Verde. So, it's 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 a big game for Ghana. It's a big game crunch, um, beginner beginning for match day three for Group A and Group B, both Ghana and Nigeria. Um, for everybody that believes in the Ghanaian story, everybody that thinks that Ghana can get a job done, everybody that understands that is a tough one. And for every Ghanaian, they know that it's a big one. So tomorrow, Nigerians will hope to go to a round of sixteen. Ghanaians will hope to do so, um, seen as um the Ivorians who are the host nation and then of course the Cape Verdes are already in there so we'll see what more brings to us but hey thank you very much for choosing me on Fifi my friend and if you're not subscribed to the channel like you always do pause the video go back and subscribe to the channel we'll see how tomorrow goes after tomorrow we'll bring you the huge post-match analysis who will cry who will be happy bye bye